So one of, one of the, the challenges, you know, in terms of um, entering dialogically with the congregation is, is sort of soliciting feedback, honest feedback that has substance. And I've been at my congregation now long enough that I think I've broken down a lot of barriers and people are very forthright in being able to tell me what they disagree with and uh, sometimes affirming, although that comes less often than the, uh, the critical things. But it is, it is creating a non-defensive, vulnerable posture that signals to people it's okay to say what you really feel. It, his ego isn't so big that I can't tell him this or that this, I, I, he'll talk about me in the sermon if, if I say things or whatever, you know, there'll be kind of repercussions. So I've tried to enter into that kind of covenant, as it were, so people can disagree with me. And um, I'll give an example, an example of where, where the, the, this happened. Some years ago, I, on a sabbatical I went, I moved around North America visiting and living in community with the new monastic movement, Shane Claiborne and, and uh, Reba House and different places like that in, uh, in um, uh, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Seattle, that sort of thing. Anyway, I, I, one of the things that, that I encountered was a story of the, called the money drop, where uh, Shane, um, he, he went to, to be in solidarity with the homeless in New York who were being ticketed, put in prison, and people had to pay to get them out. And he slept with them on the, on the streets and the sidewalks, and he was imprisoned, and he took it to court. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, because they just thought he was another homeless person, but he made a lot of noise about it, and there was a settlement, a financial settlement. He took that money, sent it out to these new monastic movements, and said, multiply the money somehow, multiply it. And then they arranged a particular day in Wall Street that they were going to do a jubilee. And they came and they called all of the anti-poverty groups and so to bring people down. And they just stood there and they blew the trumpet horn and they talked about God's uh, desire for there to be equity and justice and so forth. And they took the money and threw it in the street and threw and blocked traffic all over the place. And there was media coverage because it was right in front of Wall Street. Um, anyway, so I got back. I was so excited and I came back from sabbatical and I had all these ideas and so forth about sort of provoking um, the radical nature of our intention and, and, and summons to share and to give of ourselves. So at the end of a particular sermon, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't vested that day. I took off my suit jacket and threw it into the congregation. We need to, to, to give away uh, that which we have to help um, um, the material life of, of others. And then I went over to the uh, communion table uh, where the offering was, and they took the offering plates and threw them on the floor, threw the offering on the floor. And we need to be willing to, to multiply and scatter our resources and so forth. Well, you should hear the uh, <gasps> shock in the congregation. And then I got um, a number of emails and, and conversations. How dare you desecrate my offering? And how, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, and then I thought, boy, I'm in trouble. And so I dialogue with them and so forth. But it's an interesting thing. Uh, that, that Sunday, I got a, a, a it was in, in attendance, but three weeks later, I got uh, a phone message from a woman who was visiting that Sunday. She had recently received from an aunt a bequest, a huge bequest. Uh, money and she had used that money. She was an architect and they had started to renovate her house. So she had a fairly big house and was just making it bigger, all the things she ever wanted. She came uh, to that service and that sermon and felt convicted, as it were. Really. She went back, thought about it. She was not a regular churchgoer, but she said it made a lot of sense. And she halted the project, uh, canceled the architect, and, and, and she took that money and she began to research um, anti-poverty or poverty alleviation organizations like Oiko Credit and the Guanin Bank and various missions, uh, inner city missions. And she started to apportion her money and give it away. And she called me to let me know that it was because of the sermon and the gesture that provoked that. And there were two other stories similar to that. So I felt, you know, there was something in the spirit in this, but it also provoked feedback from people, negative feedback and so forth. That's an example of how sometimes you can create an opportunity to receive feedback, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you must bend to whatever the feedback is, if, if that's clear.